What is a story you would like to share? In 2002 I followed the band Weezer for 5 shows on their Dusty West tour. I was with my girlfriend and best friend. The whole road trip was just an amazing experience. And we managed to not hate each other at the end. We also had a fake band. Our motto was get popular. Then make music. We set up a website for the band to tell our story. And created shirts to wear at each show on the tour. It was the lamest most awesome thing ever. At the end of the first show we began taking to Weezer's new bass player Scott. And he asked about the shirts. We stuck to the story of it being our band and we were going for additional exposure. We asked if he wanted a shirt. And he said yes. We gave a shirt to him at a future stop. He liked it. Our fun with it had ended. The last stop on our road trip was our hometown. A whole group of our friends were joining us for the concert. The whole show was enjoyable. However. When they came out for the Uncle Scott was wearing our band shirt. So that is the story of the only time our band ever had any sort of appearance on stage. This'll get buried. But here goes. I was sitting in the library. Studying. For once. When a friend came running in. When he came to me. He was clearly excited. And kind of shout whispered dude. Dude. Go on iTunes. Go on iTunes. Dot. I opened iTunes. And he directed to the place you can find everyone's shared files. And the principal of the school had his settings on shared. Or whatever. I don't know. Haven't used iTunes too much these past few years. And it turns out. In his library. He has a SX tape featuring himself and a female teacher at the school. This was huge. We saved the video of course. Worst SX tape I've ever seen. We even got a drinking game out of it. Take a shot each time the principal looks into the lens. Which was a lot. An older man I stopped to talk to at work last month told me how he met Elvis when he was stationed in Europe. They were traveling in a tank when it came over their radio that he stopped to visit their base. I don't remember which country. Comma he was so excited to meet the man that he was flooring the tank back to base and I guess he pulled up too quick because he covered Elvis head to toe in mud. He was so embarrassed he said later Elvis approached him in the bar. So I'm told you're the bastard that covered me in mud. They shared a drink. He mentioned a few times how nice the guy was and he was certain he never died the way they claimed. I asked him why he thought that and he replied with. He was just too nice of a guy to do something like that. Double quote. In about 4th or 5th grade. There was this kid. Who were going to call Bill for the of the story. Bill was blind. But also extremely smart and could play the recorder like a boss. It was around Valentine's Day. And everyone has to make Valentine's for all the kids because that's just how things worked in elementary. I realized that Bill would not be able to enjoy most of the Valentine's since they were mainly visual and stuff. I made my mom get my a whole bunch of art supplies. I ended up making something you could feel. Since I figured that might mean more to him. My mom was, and is still, very good friends with his mom. Apparently. I made Bill's mom cry tears of joy because that was the first time somebody had made a Valentine he could enjoy with touch. I was an arsehole kid. When I was a toddler, my mom walked me into a public restroom and apparently she turned away from me for a second. When she looked back, my arm was extended far behind me, rearing up for the hardest slap of my life. The target? Some poor very large woman in a red dress. I guess her ass looked like a big target. My mom apologized profusely and hurried me out of there. While she was scolding me and trying not to laugh. In the parking lot I saw a couple and asked the woman if she was pregnant or just fat. I am so sorry mom. When I was around 7 years old my family went on a camping trip. There was myself. My brother Will, 12. My sister, 10. My cousins, 8. 14. And my dad. We were spending the night in a bush hut, like a cabin but open for the public to use. And I believe the Budorang National Park in NSW. Australia. There was a lot of wildlife around. And bush rats are known for getting into the huts and eating people's shit. In the hut were two long bunk beds that would sleep three or four on each level. On the top level was myself. 
my brother in the middle and my older cousin on the end. In the middle of the night. Well half woke up to something wet on his face. Assumed it to be rain. Leaky roof. Dut. Upon tasting it he realized it was not in fact rain but piss. Splashing down on his face. And assumed it to be a bush rat. In the rafters. Pissing on him. He opened his eyes to see me. Standing above him with my little 7 year old DCK out pissing on his face. I was totally asleep. I used to sleepwalk sometimes as a kid. Anyway that's my story. I pissed on my brother's face. I adopted a 12 year old cat from the shelter. She was left there because she was 12 and her owners were sick of having a cat. She resents me. But I cuddle with her anyway. She's gained back 3 of the 5 pounds she lost while she was at the shelter for 5 months. I got her in January and is slowly regrowing the fur she lost because of the stress. She's smart. Grumpy. And completely not the dog I was hoping to adopt. My earliest memorable moment. I was at Disneyland with my parents when I was super young. And I somehow made a game out of banging my parents bums like drums. So we ended up in a big old crowd of people. And I started banging the drums. Turns out I was drumming on some stranger's butt. As my parents caught me in the act from behind and pulled me away and apologized to the beaten stranger. I enjoy tracing my life's events and happenings back the smallest of details that had the most profound impacts. Long before I was born. My mom had my brother with another man at a very young age. Their relationship, obviously, failed. And on a whim. While working two jobs as an 18 year old with a 3 year old. Took a trip to the horse track to show her son the ponies. She made a bet on an extreme long shot and won nearly $4. 000 in 1980. Dot. With the money. She escaped. Just picked up and left and started traveling west. Somewhere along the way. She met my dad. And they had me. I'm the result of a long shot trifecta bet at a horse track. And because of that. I always enjoy visiting the horse track in whatever city I visit. Hoping that a landfall win will lead me on a journey beyond my wildest dreams. I was driving on the highway a few years ago when the car in front of me pulled off to the side. The guy got out and then the car exploded. I don't know what made him get out. But the fireball from the car was insane. When I got my driver's permit. I made some smaller talk with the lady as she was typing in my information. Casual jokes. That kind of thing. Then she hands it to me. Says look it over and make sure everything is correct. Double quote. So naturally. I start walking away. But I do look at it. Just give it a quick once over. And I notice. It says sex. F. Now. I'm not female. I'm male. And so I thought to myself. This is the only time I will ever get to make this joke. I turn around. And with a shaky. Not confident voice. I say I didn't get an F in sex. Double quote. No one laughed. She took my permit. After I said no. But really. It says female. Comma and redid it. Giving me a new. Correct one. In middle school. I had a friend who was very good at literature. And he used to come late. Very late. Once he was late for the math class for about 35 minutes. So when he came in. Teacher. Obviously. Started shouting at him. I remember she was saying something like do you get any medals or diplomas for this? Then why are you doing this? So just at that moment a literature teacher comes in. Searches for my friend in a classroom. And gives him a medal. Later it was revealed that he got bronze medal on the local literature contest. But the coincidence of these moments was hilarious. I used to work at an inner city thrift store. One day. This hot mess of a drag queen comes in. He's wearing sparkly false eyelashes. Bubblegum pink lipstick. And a long. Blonde wig. He's got on one of those see through mesh shirts. And a tiny leather skirt. He also has on pink fishnet stockings. And lucite stripper heels. He asks me if I've seen a certain man. And when I point in the general direction. He starts to head over. 
when the guy sees the drag queen. He starts pushing over shelves and hitting people. Trying to get out of the store. The drag queen lifts up his skirt. And pulls a small gun from a thigh holster. He shouts police. You motherfka. And starts running after him. The drag queen tackles him to the floor. With the plastic heels still on. Turns out he was an undercover cop. And the guy he was after was arrested for an illegal human trafficking ring. When I was very young. I went through a stage where I would grab anything and hold on for dear life. Dangling earrings were some of my favorites. And many ladies soon found me to be not so cute when I tried to yank their ear lobes off. My mom took me to a pet store during this phase. And an employee came up to me in my stroller and asked my mom if I would like to see a parrot. My mom immediately said. Get that bird away from him. Knowing no good could come of this. The associate assumed my mom was saying this out of fear and reassured her that it was a very nice bird before placing it in my face. I promptly grabbed a hold of its tail and ripped it clean off. My mom made a hurried exit and the saleswoman learned a valuable lesson. A few friends and I got drunk and went to a 9pm showing of Saving Private Ryan. Before the previews there was a trivia question on the screen for a few minutes. I can't remember what it was but the answer was private. I thought about it. I concentrated really hard. Letting my surroundings fade away and fighting through the booze fog. I knew I was close. Finally I got it. Physically nearly jumped out of my seat. And shouted. Private. Just as a couple was trying to squeeze past my legs with their arms full of popcorn and drinks. The guy said. Sorry. 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 Thinking I was responding to their intrusion. He obviously thought I was unbalanced and about to go up a shit and attack him. I was in Christchurch in 2011 when the massive earthquake happened that killed several people and totaled the city. I was in town when suddenly everything started jolting around. My friend had just gone into a building that fell down right before my eyes. I know this sounds cliche. But I could hear screaming and it took me a while to realize it was me. I thought my friend had just died. It seemed like it lasted for so long at the time. And everyone was in shock. After it was over. I found out my friend had ran into another building and was safe. The phone lines were completely down. A lot of buildings had collapsed. And people were crying and panicking. So yeah. We just ended up going home. At my parents wedding. Their first dance together as a married couple was to the song What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong. The morning after my older sister was born, my mother's first child, a year later. The television turned on in my mother's hospital room and the song What a Wonderful World was playing. It was a pure coincidence. A testament to the fact that the miracle and journey of life and love is quite wonderful indeed. Ever since. That song has been very dear to my family's heart. Capturing who we are with the belief that no matter how difficult things might get the beauty of life is worth it all. Okay. I will try my best to explain this but I am really bad at explaining things. Especially this. Whenever I try to explain this phenomenon. My friends are like. Dude. What the fck are you talking about? Anyways. My roommates and I bought a beer pong table for our first semester of college. When it arrived. We were so excited to get it going and play some games. Let it be known that this table wasn't just any normal table. This table had holders for the cups so the cups perfectly sat in the table. Making a pyramid of 10. When a cup was made and taken out. There was a gap in the table where the cup would to be. FCK. Okay. This is where it gets complicated. So. I was practicing my last cup shots and put one cup in the middle of the table. So there were 9 empty slots in the table. I shot the ball but missed the cup. Throwing directly over it. Making it go through the slot behind the cup. The ball bounced on a metal rod connected to the middle of the table. Went back through the same slot it was thrown through. And I shti you not. Bounced right into the cup. Of course I called to my roommates in the other room screaming at the top of my lungs that the craziest thing in the entire world just occurred right in front of my eyes. But nobody believed me. It was 2007. 
I was nearly 17. Licensed but still anxious about driving. So many things could go wrong. The car is massive and going at such a high rate of speed. So many things to watch out for. Those school scared driver's ed films didn't help either. Graphic car wreck scenes and teary parents completely terrified me and I never wanted to get behind the wheel. My parents had me build up to it though. Driving in the neighborhood. Then on bigger roads at odd hours when there weren't a lot of people out. A few highways. But living in a major city. The interstate was where where I drew the line. Too scared. Not going to happen. So on a dark and rainy night my parents come home from work. Dad excitedly informs me he has 3 NHL tickets. The doors open in 30 minutes. Want to go? Of course I say. Halfway to my room to get my jersey. One condition. He says. You have to drive us there. We know you can do it. So that's the story of how I white knuckle grip the steering wheel the entire way to the game. Saying holocry follow crap the entire way. But I got us there and back. And the game was awesome. Comma never feared interstate driving again. I once found an injured hawk in a park at 2am. I called the authorities so it didn't get hurt or hurt anyone. After about an hour no one seemed to be coming and it started pouring down rain. I threw a towel over it and scooped it up. My terrified friend, he's basically scared of any animal smaller than him, drove us to his house while I held it in the back seat. He brought out a box and told me I was on my own. So I drove it in the box to my house to get a bigger laundry tub type box with a lid. To make it softer. I lined it with towels and put him in. Not knowing the first thing about caring for birds. I did the best I could and poured some water into his beak from a cup. The next day I brought him to the nature rescue shelter. I don't think he made it because he was pretty badly injured but at least he got the best care possible before that and didn't die alone in the pouring rain. If anyone's interested I do have pictures of this one. I used to have this batch t crazy middle school teacher. Although she was sort of insane. She tried to instill values to us and taught us reading news and keeping ourselves updated with the world was important. Things she would do that were insane were like. Throwing her pens at students who didn't pay attention. When she ran out of pens, she had 4-5. She'd throw her high heels. The craziest thing she did was when a student failed a test. She'd take out a plastic baseball bat. Everyone in the class would have a go hitting the failures ass with a bat. If anyone hit excessively hard though, he would too be put up to get hit by everyone. To this day I still find her rather insane. But those were pretty funny stories to tell. Every time I took this one highway heading to another town to visit friends and relatives, US 259 in Texas. Near Kilgore, I'd see this cheerful old man in a motor scooter at the end of a long driveway. He'd go out there just to watch the traffic and wave at people. And it seemed like he was always out there. I quit taking that highway for a while. And then recently started up again. Shortly after Christmas 2015. Like clockwork. The scooter was there. But this time the old man was nowhere to be seen. There was a wreath in the seats in his place. I had never met this man. Never knew his name. Never thought to stop and speak to him. Too often we forget that the arsehole driver or the cheerful old man are real people. People with hopes and dreams and loving families. When I saw that chair with a wreath in it, it really drove home the fact that, like the empty wheelchair, there was now an empty space in someone's life. This man, his stories, his love and his tears, were just gone one day. I didn't know him, but goddammit, it hurt to look at that wheelchair. I'm late to the party. And this is probably going to get buried. But oh well. When I was 11. My brother and I loved watching The Simpsons. We would order a season pack. Watch it. And. After finishing it. Order the next season pack. We had just finished season 6. Which ends with the first part of Who Shot MR. Burns? Now. Even though the episode had aired over a decade ago. We had no clue as to who did it. Meanwhile, in order to pass the time between the arrival of the next season pack, 
We decided to watch the American Dad episode that was airing that night saw the 100th episode. I will never forget our sheer anger when Roger said. Tonight we're going to find out who shot MR. Burns. What? 15 years ago. Well who did it? The baby. TLDR. Television spoiled a 15 year old episode we were about to watch. One more short story. I'm bad at math. Always have been. Absolutely terrible. I'm on an IEP and in 6th grade I was allowed to use a calculator from then on at all times, I'm a senior in HS. Well recently I've been working with a math teacher in school and he's been really encouraging to me in a different kind of way. That's really nice. Like all my other teachers and tutors are really encouraging but he does it in a way that I really appreciate. So this year when as I'm doing math problems with him he says something that no one has said to me in 7 years. He puts his hand up and says no. Put down the calculator and I do. And he goes through it with me in my head. I was surprised when I actually got the correct answer. He was like see? You did it. You can do it. And I actually felt a little happy about myself. Later. Another day. I was sitting in a chair with my laptop. Holding a paper crane that I had folded and drew designs over. He was leaving but came over to see what's up. He saw the paper crane and was like paper cranes. Why are you making paper cranes? And I said half jokingly because I'm bad at math and he knelt down and said no. Making paper cranes requires math. You have to fold the sides and determine different lengths. You see? You are good at math. It's just a different kind of math. It was a simple moment but it made me so happy. People like that. Man. Gives me hope that I'm not as dumb as I think I am. An old guy once grabbed my boob as he walked past me in the opposite direction in a busy street. Not felt as offended as I did at that moment before. Regret not yelling after him and or chasing him down to give him a hard slap across the face. I was shocked into paralysis. Thanks for listening. It's good to get that out. I was a fat shy kid growing up. Got to 350 pounds. Then one day. When I was 23. I had a dream of losing all the weight and my virginity as well. Get a GF. Now at 28. Only one of those dreams have come true so far. It's really nice to be able to fit into nice clothes for once and not be called a gordito by a laughing Mexican kid. I'm in year 8 of trying to finish my undergraduate degree in something that I don't even enjoy, after changing it 3 other times, while dealing with severe debt. Injuries and homelessness. I have about 32 credits left but it's getting harder and harder to wake up every day. I don't really think I can make it and it's hard enough trying to write 10 page research papers for different classes when all I can think about all day is killing myself. My birthday is near the end of the month and I really don't know if I can handle getting even older while having accomplished nothing my entire adult life. In 6th grade I couldn't remember what a Game Boy was called and accidentally called it a Playboy. So we're voting on what two game systems to write a comparison essay on and I wanted to vote for my favorite. Which was the Game Boy. Even though I knew it wouldn't win. I sat there with a blank piece of paper trying to remember what it was called. And running out of time I wrote Playboy. I could only remember the boy part and thought play worked well. Thank god I didn't write my name on that paper. Because the teacher raised holy hell. Would have been the only time I'd ever gotten detention. Everyone was laughing and I sat there. The stereotypical quiet girl. Embarrassed out of my mind. Told my parents about it last year. They loved it. I've had a needle phobia since I was 10. Also since I was 10. I've known I want to work in healthcare. I've always told myself that I'd make sure I get over it before it holds me back. And since I got a job as a trainee nuclear medicine technologist. The part that's been scaring me is needing to inject radio pharmaceuticals and take blood samples. First injection I observed at work. I fainted. It took a while before I could watch without feeling dizzy. I slowly became totally okay with observing. And did a course in venipuncture and cannulation. I practiced on the weird fake plastic arm they have. But it's nothing like a real person. And the idea of doing this on a real patient was still terrifying me. Today. 
after so much putting it off. I decided to just get stuck in. My supervisor said I could wait until there was a patient with perfect veins. But I knew that wait could be forever. It wasn't perfect. I needed a little help getting everything properly sighted. But I finally got over the mental block that I was having about puncturing skin with a needle. This is such a huge deal for me. I honestly never thought I could do it. I can't stop smiling. Nothing will hold me back anymore. I had a bully who was a dick. He took the piss out of me for being crap at sports. One time on a trip to the Isle of Wight. An island most year 6 classes, British equivalent to 6th grade, go to. To make matters worse I was horribly homesick and he was my roommate. On the last night we went bowling. I overheard Biggest Dickers saying I don't want Mikeman 124 on my team. We're bound to lose. Dut. He scored a piddly 79. I got the highest score out of everyone with 123. So there I am. In Sri Lanka. Formerly Salon. At about 3 o'clock in the morning. Looking for 1000 brown M&Ms to fill a brandy glass. Or Ozzy wouldn't go on stage that night. So. Jeff Beck pops his head round the door. And mentions there's a little sweets shop on the edge of town. So. We go. And. It's closed. So there's me. And Keith Moon. And David Crosby. Breaking into that little sweets shop. A. Well. Instead of a guard dog. They've got this bloody great big Bengal tiger. I managed to take out the tiger with a can of mace. But the shop owner and his son. That's a different story altogether. I had to beat them to death with their own shoes. Nasty business. Really. But. Sure enough. I got the M&Ms. And Ozzy went on stage and did a great show. I had a hamster I named Stuart Little. When I was 3 or 4 my brother bought it at a pet store as a surprise for me and it came in a small cardboard box. We stopped to go grocery shopping shortly afterwards and he decided to leave the hamster in the car while we did so. I distinctly remember telling him it was an awful idea and that the hamster could escape. He scoffed at my warning and told me we wouldn't be long. When we came back. The cardboard box had a hole in it and my brother's face was I suppose priceless. I'm going to assume that I said something along the lines of. See. I told you. Double quote. He quickly searched his car for the poor deer and reached under the passenger seat for it and cursed loudly when it bit him and threatened to kill Stuart. I remember being horrified at this and pleading him not to do so even though he was obviously not being serious. When we brought Stuart home. We put him in a plastic cage but he promptly chewed a hole through that and escaped so we had to put him in a fish tank which he chewed a very tiny hole in but not enough to escape. I guess he had a very nasty chewing habit. I used to take him out every now and then to draw him and when he escaped I would pretend I didn't know how he did. I lost my dad to pancreatic cancer about 6 years ago. He also lost his father to the same cancer. My dad told me a long time ago that he saw an owl. Midday near his old house. A short while before his dad passed. I believe he said it was white. About two weeks before my dad passed. I was in my kitchen. Which is a window looking outside. What do you know, a brown owl lands on the fence post midday and looks me right in the eyes. We locked eyes for about 10 minutes. Before it flew away. Got the chills so bad as that happened. I took it as a sign. And I'm still trying to figure out what it means. Well this morning. A slightly. Read. Very. Hungover GF and I went to Starbucks. Like 10 seconds after we walked in. A drugged out watcho started throwing shti all over the place. Just walking around nailing people with napkins. When the manager tried to escort him out. The dude spat in his face and shoved him before running into the bathroom and locking it. Some poor. Unsuspecting cop walked in 30 seconds later trying to buy a coffee. A coffee for which he now had to call for backup. 5 minutes later. We have 5 cops interviewing the staff before they attempted to talk with the dude. After 2 minutes of one sided conversation. The manager opened the door. Someone how this cracked out guy managed to sneak out of the SB without 5 cops. The SB staff. Or any of us noticing. 
That was my morning thus far. No longer hungover at least. This last weekend one of clubs I'm involved in on campus put on a huge event where we rented out the student union building and turned it into an interactive haunted house. Students got to form teams and shoot zombies, other student staff members, using nerf guns and run through the building and try to survive. Some friends and I are massive nerds and decorated our portion of the haunted house to basically be a Dungeons and Dragons adventure. I was dressed up as ridiculous looking satire of a dungeon master and guided the players through the zone with a nasally voice and silly outfit. Anyway. During the runs I would call different players different fantasy races to add to the fun. If someone had a good shot. I would say something silly like the elf in the front strikes true. Or something like that. At one point I was walking in front and leading the players to a cellar themed room and I said something like there is an overpowering smell of alcohol to all but the dwarf in the back. Dead silence. I turn around and see a dwarf with a nerf gun standing in the group. I completely lost the act and composure but before I could apologize everyone in the group, including the dwarf, began to laugh hysterically. Thankfully it broke the tension and I got to laugh with them but I was so embarrassed. I talked and apologized to the dude afterwards and he was super chill and cool. I am just never going to live this down. Every summer my parents would take my sisters and I on a road trip from the east coast to the west coast I order to visit family and do some sightseeing. On one of these trips. I was 12, f, and in the stage of loving zip off pants. They were great for road trips because I didn't have to pack as much but terrible in the car because of their parachute like material kept sweating. So we make it across the country and had to drop my 19 year old sister off at the airport to go back to college for summer training. And my dad opens the door and tells me to get out and to my surprise I don't have any pants on. So 12 year old me had just spent the whole more in the back seat of a Toyota Echo with my two sisters pants less and since there were zip off pants I could find the short part. Only the removable parts. My dad and I bonded but only because he started crying because he was laughing so hard. And my whole family shamed in the parking garage of the Denver airport. My love for zip off pants died a little bit that day.